Well, let's move on and look at the larynx. Here is a section on the right-hand side, again, of that mid-sagittal section taken through the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. And you can see the larynx positioned in this particular section through the body. Remember, it sits just below the epiglottis. And earlier on, I explained the importance of the epiglottis in closing over the entry into the airway at the larynx as the larynx is lifted during swallowing. Now, labelled on the image in the middle, the histological section of the larynx are various components of the larynx. This section is through, again, the centre of the larynx of a person looking towards you. So you can see on the right and left-hand side of the airway, going down through the vestibule, are two ventricles. And then above this ventricle is a ventricular fold, and below is a vocal fold. These two folds are called the vocal folds, but the ventricular fold is a false vocal cord. The true vocal cord is a vocal fold that is labelled and lies in the most inferior part of that ventricle. The ventricle and the vestibule are very important components because they help to change the, um, the sounds of our voices. And I'll talk a bit about that in a moment. Now, the vocal fold is our true vocal cord. As the person is facing you, these extend in an antero-posterior orientation. And they, in fact, form the boundary of the larynx, of the airway going down in towards the lungs through the trachea. And that boundary is called the rima glottis. And the glottis opens and closes during respiration. This vocal cord has got attachments. It's got attachments from the vocalis muscle through a vocalis ligament. But this vocal cord also can be influenced by other components. When air passes along between these vocal cords, the vocal cords vibrate. And this vibration can be moderated. It can be changed. The vocal cord beca can become more tense or more relaxed, and that changes the, the type of vibration and therefore the pitch of the sound. And the tension on that vocal cord is produced intrinsically by the vocalis muscle contracting. It's also changed by very small cartilages and intrinsic muscles that move those cartilages and change the, the proportions of the glottis. So changing the proportions or the diameter of the glottis or the opening into the airways and changing the tension on that vocalis, that vocal cord, is responsible for the pitch of our voices. And phonation is really then also carried out by the effects of the sound going through the vestibule and the ventral you see here and also in the upper parts of our respiratory system. That gives our individual sound of our vowels and our consonants. There are extrinsic muscles to the larynx. They have no role in sound production. They're the muscles that we use to actually lift the larynx that I described before as part of the swallowing process.